so this is question number 11 from SC Verma, chapter number 3. We, so far in up to question number 10, most of the problems that you saw, they were on based upon some kind of formula. You put a formula and you get the results. So this problem is not fixed on a certain formula. You cannot apply a certain formula and get the answer. So this figure, I'll draw a figure. I earlier recorded this video, but we had a very dim marker. So I got a new set of marker. So hopefully this should come out good. So the figure, we have a figure that shows the variation of displacement on x-axis with respect to time. Find time t such that the average velocity of the particle during this period 0 to 2 is 0. The graph is something like this. This is time t and this is the displacement x. The time starts from here, goes down and it goes up and something like this. It's not perfectly symmetrical. It's a little like this. And this graph is steeper. Just to show that the graph is irregular. This time, let me show, this is, this is how the graph looks like if you can see this. Like this, 10 is a little here. This is 10 seconds. This is 20. And somewhere here we have a 10. So let's first see what's going on in this graph, in this motion. So if I if I draw a x-axis, just a x-axis, and we have a the particle right at the time start of the time and t is equal to zero, the displacement is 20. Which means if I plot this x-axis and if I measure 10, 20 here. The particle is right here at time t is equal to 0. As time goes by, the distance, the displacement reduces. Let's say at t equal to 2, it's somewhere like 18 milliseconds. So what's happening? The particle is at t equal to 20. Now it's at t equal to 18. That means the particle moves in this direction. As time more goes by, for example here, the time further reduces to here. As more time passes by, the particle keeps on moving in this direction and somewhere here at 8 seconds, it reaches its lowest point, which may be something like uh, maybe 12 or 14 units of distance. If this is 10, this is 20, it reaches here and then once it passes this point, it starts the distance, the separation, for example, at here, it's a displacement, again it starts increasing. That means if the particle takes a move and it starts moving in this direction. And, it, and from x, it again starts maybe 15 and then 18 and finally 20 and then from more than 20. So at some point of time, the particle moves here and then comes back to the point 20 and then moves further. So this whole graph can be understood in terms of this kind of movement. The one thing missing in this graph is the time. We are only seeing how the particle is moving, but at what rate it is moving, we don't know from this graph, but it's helpful in understanding this. Now coming back to the problem, we need to find the average velocity of the particle during this period. Let's understand the second part. When the particle starts from here, it goes down. So what is its velocity? It's this distance divided by this time. And also, this velocity is negative because it's moving in the negative x direction. And then it keeps, and then it moves further from here to here, it's again negative. Here to here, it's again negative because the distance is decreasing. So if I ask you what will be the average velocity from here to here, it will be some negative number, some non-negative zero number, because all these velocities are negative negative numbers, and if you take the average of it, they will all be negative numbers. Let's go past this point. 
the particle takes a turn and it starts moving in this direction so it its velocity starts getting positive and if i ask you what is the velocity average velocity between this point and this point then it will be still be negative because most of the time it was negative a little bit of the time it was positive and if you take the average of these two velocities it will be still negative but let's move past further here this is mostly negative quite a bit of positive but overall is still negative velocity but let's say we come back to this point and what happens the velocity is negative most of the time quite a bit of time but and quite a bit of time is positive they are almost equal and at this point the average velocity is close to zero now we defined average velocity as equal to displacement divided by time so if you look at this point we want the, we want to find out the time t when the displacement velocity is zero average velocity is zero and that is possible when the displacement is zero what is displacement displacement is the vector and from, we are seeing that from here it goes back goes here and come back and when it comes back at this particular point the vector this vector is zero so this happens when let's say this is x we call it x t 0 this is called x t 1 and the time between them is t then this happens the displacement happens when x t 0 minus x t 1 divided by t is equal to 0 we have found this one point x t 1 where this is equal to x t 0 and at that point time t is approximately down here which is 12 seconds now we have done it through the definition of the average velocity but there is un, one unanswered uh, question unanswered thing and that is the average velocity we know that the velocity at two point is let's say we know the velocity here we know the velocity here and you can simply take the vector difference of the two but let's now prove that the average velocity over this whole period of time is the same as the velocity here minus velocity here. We will do is in the second part of this question. What we are going to do is let's say we divide this whole trajectory in small number of parts let's say from at this point the displacement is x0 the next one is x1 then x2 then x3 and then so on and so forth and finally we have x and here x and can be anywhere it can be here it can be here it can be here and this division i have divided it in all very small small equal length of time let's say this is delta t1 this is delta t2 this is delta t3 Oh, no, no, I will make all them equal, T, delta T, delta T, and so on and so forth. There are, there are this, at, at X1 we have one division, so there are N such delta T divisions. We are trying to find out the velocity, if you want to fill off, find the velocity in this very, very small period, then I can say this velocity, call it V1, and this V1 is going to be this displacement, x1 minus x2 x0 divided by delta t and similarly and because in this case x1 is smaller and x1 is higher so it will be a negative and as we saw that similarly in between x1 to x2 period if we call it velocity v2 this will be x2 minus x1 divided by delta t and similarly, we can write V3 is equal to X3 minus X1 divided by delta T. You can keep going so on and so forth. In the final leg, we find velocity, we call it X, V, N. So this index and this distance is matching. So V, N is equal to X, N minus X, N minus 1 divided by delta T. Now, these are the, all the velocity. How do we find the uh, 
the average of this velocity the average of the velocity v average will be equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus and so on and so forth plus vn divided by n now we can add up all these things x1 x1 on the on the denominator we have all delta t we add up on a neutral numerator we x1 x1 cancels x2 is x3 minus x2 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 cancel x3 x3 will cancel and xn minus 1 and xn minus 1 will cancel we will have xn minus x0 this is xn minus x0 divided by delta t and this n number n and t times delta t times n is nothing but this whole time period t xn minus x0 divided by this delta t what does this say is to find the average velocity all you need to know is what was the final displacement minus what was the initial displacement how it made a trajectory is immaterial you don't need to know x1 x2 x3 and all this thing and from this now if you understand this average velocity you know that you need to find and this average velocity will be zero only if the initial and the final displacements are zero and that is happening only at two points on this curve so this is the key to the understanding I hope you not only know the velocity but also the average velocity and if you understand this I hope that problem will be help you in understanding this.